actually is called uh, Macau Street Bread Talk and I'm going to talk about uh, anybody know about Macau or you never heard about it? Okay, good. Uh, I'm talking about the Macau and the streets. Actually Macau is not that big. I'm going to give you some basic details and information about Macau and I'm going to go through a few uh, sections the purpose of the group and uh, the current group statistic and the status and the method and the prelim findings. Actually, it's this ongoing project is still ongoing. And I, of course, I encountered some problems and issues during my uh, research process. Uh, you see the arrows, so that's where is Macau, which is quite close to Hong Kong. If you, now we got a bridge from Macau to Hong Kong. It takes about 40 minutes from Macau to Hong Kong by bus. Actually, when I left my home at 4 a.m. in Macau, and I arrived at Albany 30 hours later, and this is Macau in different districts. And 100 years ago, Macau is only 11.6 square kilometers, and right now it's about 22 square kilometers, which means most of the places is uh, land reclamation. And part and one kilometer is, is actually a lease from China. This is actually belongs to China, but Macau paid the money and leased this place to build a new university there. Very small, and from one side to the other side, it's less than 10 kilometers. And this is the statistic about the uh, enlargement of Macau from 11.6 square kilometers up to 32.9 right now. And, this is, you know. and some interesting facts about the streets in Macau the longest one is actually 2.9 uh, kilometers, and the shortest one is actually 4.3. It's less than the distance from here to the door, but they still call it a street. And the widest is 41 meters, is actually the major road. And somewhere else right now, even if you are a little bit bigger, you got trouble. It's only uh, 0.3 meters. And street names in Macau is very interesting. They got uh, the original one, I mean, before the handover from Portuguese to China, is in Portuguese, mainly in Portuguese. And then they put a Chinese thing there. But the meaning of the Portuguese and the Chinese can. Uh, in Yuvarifan. I mean, they got a name in Portuguese because the Portuguese went in this way, but the Chinese local people said, oh, I have another form. And they put the both name there. And of course, some of the places reflect a lot of Christianity heritage because of the Portuguese. And uh, in consistent of three names, Portuguese and Chinese, some are by tra trans uh, literation and some are paraphrase. And it's interesting, there are three major districts in Macau, and these uh, street names are different sometimes. And the government records in 2011, actually I tried to look for the latest record, but there's none, and the government people have no idea how many streets are there in Macau. But uh, eight years ago, there are 1,225, but for the last eight years, Macau has been uh, enlarged by two, uh, two to three kilometers, square kilometer, which means we got more streets right now. And these are the types of streets in Macau, and all of them are in Portuguese, the English translation is just to tell you what it means in Portuguese. And the purpose of the group I created on Facebook is actually to put a lot of photos of the streets of Macau in on Facebook and of course the images and videos of are shown on the groups and users are trying to record the members because some of the streets they recognize it when they were a kid maybe 30, 40 years ago and try to remember the story, what happens in the past. And they try to communicate with each other. Sometimes they find out some person on the groups are actually their neighborhood 30 years ago. And uh, there are a lot of many-to-many uh, -many dialogues and perhaps some uh, private discussion among themselves. And uh, the world of Maori history, people talk about the history. Uh, I know that a number of those uh, participants are actually uh, over 60 years old, they are retired. They spend a lot of time on those groups, and they try to tell the personal story, the first person uh, experience about what happened in the past. And this is actually a kind of social capital accumulation. People 
I met a lot of people, I told you, but I, before that, I didn't know that. But now I know that. And it's a community building. There's actually people coming out because of the Facebook group. They come out for tea, for dinner, for lunch, and even a short trips to somewhere else, to Hong Kong or to China. And there is a lot of affiliation and fact-finding between the members as well. And this is the group uh, interface. If you have a phone, you can scan the uh, QR code and you can access to the group. And, and I, uh, right now we've got 948 albums and each album actually contains pictures about a specific street in Macau. And these are some of the basic statistics. Uh, the group is not that big. Right now I got uh, 1,107 members. All of those members, 831 of them are actually quite active. And these are the statistics about the popular days. I don't know why Monday is the most popular, but I don't know. And uh, afternoon, of course, before dinner is the most popular hours for the people to talk about things on the Facebook group. And men, 70%, near 70%. Women is only around 30%. And most of the people, of course, are from Macau. And if you see the second, the second largest group is actually from Hong Kong. And uh, it's quite interesting. Hong Kong and Macau, both of them were colonies. And quite a lot of those people actually got the resident status of both Hong Kong and Macau. I'm one of those. And maybe about 50,000 people or 10% of the people in Macau are actually Hong Kong residents as well. And vice versa, uh, they are around 150,000 Hong Kong people who are also Macau residents living in Hong Kong. And these are the top countries, Macau, Hong Kong, China, and the others are not that significant. And the map is building Friday. In this research, Macau-related photos, images, and videos are shown to Facebook group. Users are free to react to those photos too. They try to record a memory, personal story, communicate with one-to-one -one dialogue, participate in uh, many, many, many-to-many -many dialogues, and have some public description as well. And there are different degrees of code. I, I try to distinguish the codes. Uh, I call the first degree post is the person who posts the photos on a group, and after that, another person can share the post to somewhere else or their own. Uh, the personal timeline, that's the second degree. And a third person can share the second person to another place as well, I call it third degree. And of course it can uh, keep on going without any, limit, uh, without any limitation. And this makes uh, it difficult to try to collect all the data from the post. Before that actually it's quite easy, you can get some application, online applications to collect all the data. But somehow since last year, uh, Facebook has some new policy on the privacy issue. We need the user, every individual user, to allow the applications to collect the data. That means right now the only way I can collect the data is manually to look at each post and comment. But before that, I can use some tools to do that. Uh, that's what I've said before. Technically, it is possible to collect all the data and comment, but the privacy issue uh, you know, allow us to do so right now. And of course, most of the comments are just uh, uh, you click the like button, or of course, they, some people like to click the love, ha ha, wow, send an angry. And of course, a lot of people do other options as well. And some people, quite a lot of them actually, if they have an affiliation with a certain street, they would try to find a photo of them, uh, themselves or something which is related to that street. And they will post a comment about that street. Okay, maybe perhaps. Uh, the photos of the same street 50 years ago or a personal photo which showed that uh, the photo was token, uh, taken on the same street or some sort of meanings to them as well. Uh, and some image posts including the same place from an earlier time, food item available on the street. Actually, Macau is very small. And if you walk down the street, you can find a lot of uh, restaurant, uh, street food or whatever. And some people like to post some funny image if they love it they, to try to find an intimated truth and put it on a, uh, as a comment. And uh, some other, if they are very uh, interesting or they have a very strong affiliation with certain places, they will try to look for further information just to let other people to know about what happened on that particular street. But some people even went further. 
they write a short essay, maybe a hundred words, and talk about their personal history or a poem or story about what happened. And through the post and response action, social capital are actually building up and personal benefits can be found. The recall of memory from youth, self-expression, happiness acquired, affiliation with others, recognition from others, connection with others, expansion of own social network, through the post and response action process are social capital for the users. And uh, I tried to give you as, uh, some example. Actually, this is quite an uh, old building somewhere. It's still, it's still standing there, that building. And some people may walk past by the building uh, quite often and they have no idea. And you can see two comments that people actually uh, try to talk about what kind of building is it in these. The first one is asking, the second one is some person give their own personal uh, comment. And this one is actually a response with a picture. The first one was actually taken by me. And the second one is some people find a picture of the same place before the construction of a tunnel and they pose it as a response. And uh, this is a typical street sign on uh, in Macau. And people will talk about it. Actually, this street is right in front of a uh, uh, supermarket called Park and Shop. And then people will buy, okay, thank you. And so the last one is that, oh, beautiful wood. And uh, this is a kind of uh, typical post I made and create with a street name sign and a number of shots of the street with, uh, from different angles. And people will talk about it. Yesterday I passed by there and you see a lot of people, blah, 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 blah. And this is another type of post I created. Um, just talking about this trip. Uh, and I try to get the information about the street. And some people, they know the name, but they have no idea the origin. Or actually, most quite a lot of names of the street in Macau is named after those Portuguese people or famous uh, uh, officials. And this street is actually named after one of the governors of Macau, the 96th governor of Macau. Three minutes to go. Oh, okay. Stopping too much. Uh, I still have a lot of pictures and samples. These are some of the pictures about those street uh, restaurants and people always like to comment which one is good and which one is bad. And these are some of the photos captured from the Oling Islands in Macau as well. And well, actually out of the pictures, actually I capture a lot of videos and I put it on YouTube and Korean channel and most of the people can actually go to take a look at the videos and look at actually how the street looks like. And if you would like, you can Scan a QR code and you can access the channel. Okay, and some of those people actually they have a lot of story. They keep on commenting. Uh, I checked out a profile of this person, George, and he's uh, more uh, over sixty years old, and he talked about what happened. They can buy a lot of things by that time. It's talking about fifty cents local money by that time to buy some sort of items, and they can also see the uh, they call the Migo Migo, which is actually a Negro. A soldier from Africa, from Angora, they stationed in Macau at that time and they talk about that. And there's another street. There are a lot of old street like this, and people like to visit those streets to try to look for what happens in Macau 50, 60 years ago. And these streets are still there, and some people like to take pictures, take pictures because. Uh, we don't know what happens sooner or later, the government or some property developer will just take it over and make a new buildings. Well, some people like to put out the breakfast. It's a typical breakfast in Macau. It costs how much? Five US dollars. And people talk about it. And this one is funny. It's a casino, wing casinos from America. And the person who responded actually, he was working there uh, during the construction period, and he posted a picture of himself. So glossiness. Oh, okay. Okay, these are all, uh, a lot of pictures. Okay, try to. Uh, we have twenty minutes each. Right? Twenty. Twenty. There's three of us speaking. There's three people. Yeah. Oh, three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I can still have yeah, yeah, yeah. time. Okay, let me go back. Just a little bit. Where? And people have a lot of dialogues because of the picture and they will initiate dialogues and talk whatever they want to talk without any limitation, of course. 
and some of those people are actually Portuguese people. And it's funny, those Portuguese people who are living in Macau, they speak Cantonese you know, or one, one type of the Chinese languages, but most of them, they know how to speak, but they don't know how to write and read. And that's why they respond with English, because most of the people, I mean, officially, official language in Macau is Portuguese and Chinese. But I'm sure 95% of the people didn't understand any Portuguese, including myself. I have no idea, except a few words. And then right now, our Facebook actually do something is they call a visual storyteller. They label the person who do a lot of posting and they, uh, they label them as a visual storyteller. This person, Bruce, I didn't know him, but I'm sure he's working around the time most of the time and put a, uh, capture a lot of pictures and put it on Facebook. And this uh, picture, tarot, uh, a lot of people talking about what happens in this place and they're talking about uh, what they know 50 years ago. And some of those places, Homokai is very small, only 32 square kilometers, but a lot of places actually are hiding somewhere. People have never been there before, and they even don't know there's a place like this. And people will ask, where is it? And of course, and after the second person replied, okay, this is a place uh, in a place called Kolowan. And this is another one, people just, okay. It's funny, I don't know, because some of our American friends or the European friends, they never talk about good morning and stuff. But the Chinese people in Macau, they like to do that every morning. I got a lot of notification, I say, good morning, Alan, blah, blah, blah. Have you get a cup of coffee here, blah, blah, blah. And they keep on doing it the whole morning. They do that on Facebook, uh, Facebook groups as well. And this one, they're also talking about going to the market to buy chicken. And they talk about, okay, I captured this picture from a street to another, and they have some discussion actually on where I have taken this picture. Okay. Uh, people's sense of identity, identity to Macau is an issue as newcomer, uh, newcomer arrived in Macau. Old Macau and Cantonese is often used to refer to people who lived there and know the details of the past, especially things happened before 1970s. Uh, Two minutes. Okay. Uh, most of the situation. And most of the situation of Cantonese may not be easily replicated in the physical world with answers. For instance, even such a small city state like Macau, and roughly 30 square kilometers, a person may not have visited a certain location in the past few decades. Those photos actually draw attention of the person for discussion. These are some examples, but I skip it. And this is a summary of all those comments. I tried to categorize them, actually, just six categories: memories, memoirs, subjects, expected. Some people know a lot of things about a certain street or a certain uh, shop. The narratives of personal experience, a lot of people like to do that, especially those people over 60 years old. An affiliation and identification if they belong to a school or belongs to a company. And some people they just have interest in what happened there. And at last they may take a connection with Facebook friends. They are not they do they know each other physically, but just on Facebook. Okay. That's it. I, I guess after the after the presentation.